Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you this morning as we gather together to worship our Lord in spirit and in truth. Uh, not very much by way of announcements. Um, elders meeting coming up in July. Uh, August 6th is our second quarterly business meeting and election of officers and committees. So those are the two main things uh, to watch for. Uh, keep praying. Uh, keep praying about our situation with the boiler, air conditioning, so on. Air conditioning today isn't uh, quite as big an issue, is it? But uh, in terms of the boiler, we do need heat come this fall. So, so uh, please be praying about that. We have uh, two more. Uh, outfits coming out this week, at least two, to uh, uh, look at things and, and give us a bid so that we know kind of where we are. So uh, keep praying about that. Um, yeah, I think that's it. It seemed like maybe there was something else, but I don't remember. Anybody else? Anything? Okay. Well, I'll think of it after the service probably. Uh, there is one thing by way of uh, order of service. If you use your song sheet, the first song is actually uh, what's listed in the main part of your bulletin, the cover of the bulletin, the bond of love. The song sheet has amazing love first, but actually it'll start with the bond of love, then Christian love, then blessed be the tie that binds, then amazing love. So that's the order we're singing today nothing else, then let's pause uh, to come before the Lord in prayer this morning as we begin. Our gracious God and Father in heaven, uh, we thank you because without you this would not be possible. Uh, without you we would just not even be meeting, uh, for you are the Lord, you are the Most High, and you have graciously uh, condescended to us and uh, in your mercy and grace, through the blood of Jesus, has re have redeemed us. Um, and we thank you so much, Lord, for the great salvation uh, that is ours in him. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for uh, the priority of worship, uh, for the commitments that are made and arranging schedules and I know people get busy in things and, um, but you are worthy Lord always um, you're always worthy and you are good all the time and uh, we pray Lord that our worship this day would honor you and bring you glory as we enter into worship this morning with praise and thanksgiving to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. So stand with me as we turn to worship then this morning, singing together the bond of love, Christian love, blessed be the tie that binds an amazing love. <laughs>
before you're seated, greet one another this morning. (laughs) 
Well, as you are finding your way back to your seats, I invite you to turn either in your worship bulletin or up here on the screen for our scripture reading for today. We're reading from Psalm 67, verses 1 through 7. God be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. For you will judge the peoples with uprightness and guide the nations on the earth. <clears throat> the earth has yielded its produce. God, our God, blesses us. Let's pray together again, once again. Our Lord God and Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to come before you and to come to your throne of grace, being invited in by yourself through the blood of Jesus as he has entered the most holy place with his own blood. And there at your throne of grace we find mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. And you know the various needs that we have, O oh Lord, and you know those burdens that we carry in each of our hearts as families, as individuals, as parents, as children. And Lord, we ask that you would take note of, of these unspoken uh, requests, these unspoken burdens that perhaps each one of us have in one way or another. And that you would hear us, that you know all things, O oh Lord, and you know what we need. And so we thank you, Father, that you are uh, attentive to, to every aspect of our lives. We thank you so much for all you have done and all you continue to do. And so, Lord, we pray for the ongoing health and well-being of this church. And you know the needs we have as a church with the boiler going out and AC going out and, and the way our finances are. And, uh, Lord, we... Uh, uh, we're getting a couple of more bids this week and maybe one other one, and we have to make some decisions. We pray for wisdom and help and in these decisions we face. We pray, Lord, that, that uh, uh, you would grant your people here uh, the wherewithal to, uh, to deal um, with these issues rightly before you and uh, as good stewards of the resources you have entrusted to us. And so, Lord, we ask uh, for your help. We ask for your help also for our nation. We pray for the, for the well-being and welfare of our nation, that your people might continue to prosper in this place. We pray for peace. Lord, we pray for peace. I know that we talk about being a divided nation. We hear it on the news. We hear it from our co-workers, perhaps. We hear it in other walks of life. Uh, but, Lord, uh, we know that it is in Christ that we find our unity, that we do find peace, we find our welfare. And we pray, Lord, that it would become more and more evident to each of us and uh, be a predominant influence once again in our cultural setting. Lord, we pray also for those in authority over us, that you would grant them wisdom and the wherewithal to deal with various things that arise both foreign and domestic, and that they would honor you and fear you alone. We pray for the Snodgrass family, our missionary of the week. We thank you for them and the way things have been able to work out for them so that they are not having to leave the country every so often and wait and come back because of their visa issues and so on. <coughs> we thank you, Lord, that... Uh, you have worked those issues out. We thank you for the recording studio. We thank you for a new place to live. We thank you for uh, 
new schooling for their children and, and everything that you have done, Lord. We praise you and rejoice with them before you. And ask, Lord, that you would continue to help them to be fruitful in their ministry and all they do. For those who will soon be traveling, we pray for their safety, their well-being, enjoyment, relaxation, refreshment. Lord, that uh, you would be with each as they head out and bring them back safely to us. We pray for Seven Stones Church. We thank you for them. We thank you for all you have done. For them, we thank you for the next step they have taken and, and uh, the way that you have uh, established them and built them up. Continue, Lord, to build them up and add to their number. We pray for our youth and our kids and kids club. We thank you for them. We ask as they have, and we trust that they finish well and have finished well and they have a good productive summer and that you would be honored in their lives and that you would grant uh, us rest. Father, for health issues that come up, uh, we thank you that you are the great physician and that you hear us as we cry out to you. Uh, we pray for Alan as he goes back in to get uh, uh, his uh, liver checked again and we pray that the numbers would be good and that he would do well and be well. For others who might be wrestling with health issues, whether colds or flus or whatever it might be, I think of Lisa who had to go home. Uh, Lord, lay your healing hand upon each one and restore them. And I thank you, Lord, for the amazing thing that you've, again, that you have done in my life. And, bearing, and I bear witness to you, O oh God, that it is by your hand uh, that I'm able to stand here today in the condition I'm in. And I just thank you and praise you. Lord, for other things that come up, we pray that whatever it might be, that our attitude would be one of bringing you honor and glory in our lives and being thankful people for all that we could complain about, for all that goes on that we could get bitter about. Uh, we pray that you would guard us, Lord, from these things and we would be a grateful people recognizing that we have received everything from your hand and that you are sovereign and in your providence you care so much for us and deal so kindly with us. And so, Lord, be honored and glorified now as we turn to your word, as you teach us your ways, as you reveal yourself to us, in your ways to us that we might continue to bring you honor and glory in our lives. We praise you and thank you through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Somebody get that, would you? I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> now, do I know who it is so I can tease them? No. That's all right. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, this is kind of an excursus. Last week we talked about holiness and the challenge of holiness. And it is a, it is a, uh, it is a challenge, is it not? It is a challenge to become like Jesus and to excel. Uh, to, to guard against the attitude, I guess, of never being satisfied or of being satisfied. We want to guard against that. We want to guard against being too satisfied with where we are in our walk with the Lord. And you might be doing well. And Paul made sure to tell the, the believers in Thessalonica that they are indeed walking and pleasing God. But then he added, do so more and more or abound all the more. Don't be satisfied. Think in terms of excellence, of excellence. So here we are now dealing with some background, actually. Uh, perhaps that phrase, you, you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. Verse 9 through 12, let's read those uh, together. I invite you to follow along. Now as to the love of the brethren, you have no need for anyone to write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. For indeed you do practice it toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, to excel still more. 
and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and attend to your own business and work with your own hands, just as we commanded you, so that you will behave properly toward outsiders and not be in any need. And so there it is. You yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And so what I thought we would do is think about it in terms of what God has done. We've already mentioned some of this. Paul's desire for the church to excel in the Christian